I'm sure you collectors would agree with me. When you uh, are able to buy something directly from the family, it puts a whole new dimension on the item you're looking at or the item you're buying. In this case, uh, I got a phone call one day from the grandson of a gentleman called Edney Richardson. And I bought this M95 Mauser rifle from him. Uh, luckily, it came with a lot of provenance because of the fact that uh, it was his granddad's and he knew his granddad very well, he was able to give me a lot of information. And then conversely, I managed to do uh, a lot of research and found out uh, a lot more information about the original owner and also some more information about Edney Richardson. So as I mentioned, it's an M1895 Vormauser rifle. It was made by Deutsche Waffen und Munitionfabriken, a bit of a mouthful, or DWM in uh, Berlin. It's uh, serial number 1350 on the action and the bolt, so it's, it's, it's all matching. Uh, on the one side of the butt is J.P. Marais, which has been carved in here. And then all along the stock, where my hands are here, is in a different hand, J.P. Marais, Leidenberg, uh, and then the name of the farm, which is Bosch, Platzbosch, I beg your pardon, Platzbosch, 1899. So this guy is saying his name was J.P. Marais. He came from the district of Leidenburg and the Transvaal, which is an eastern Transvaal, and the name of his farm, which unfortunately has been obliterated. You can see on the floor end here, it must have fallen over at some stage or maybe fell into the campfire, and it's been quite severely damaged, unfortunately. But the uh, date, 1899, is very clear. What I've managed to find is there were two uh, Boers or Burgers named J.P. Marais who came from Leidenburg. In fact, there were three. Uh, one of them applied for a, uh, his medal after 1920. I cannot be quite sure of which one um, this J.P. Marais was, but there certainly were two who were both captured uh, in 1901 and sent to various POW camps. So that's the Boer side of the story. Now, on the other side of the butt, we've got two initials, E.R. That's for Edney Richardson. And if you look uh, to your right, I have a frame here. Uh, with Edney Richardson. There's a photograph of him on his wedding day and also with his slouch hat when he joined the uh, 6th QMI, Queensland Mounted Infantry. Uh, he joined up uh, in 1901 and was sent over to South Africa. But the interesting story which I managed to dig up is the uh, Queensland Mounted Infantry had adverts in the newspapers, uh, men wanted who can ride and shoot. Men needed to be 21 years to 32 years of age, no younger, no older preferably not married. Well, our friend Edney was only 19, but with regard to the requirements of riding and shooting, he could do both. And if you look at the frame, uh, he was an, an expert shot. He'd been a rifle shooter all his life, and even as a young man, he'd won several trophies. Uh, when I managed to get the uh, rifle from the family, I was also very lucky to be able to buy his Queen South Africa medal, which you'll see in the frame, as well as three beautiful uh, Queen's shot badges. They dated uh, 1899 and 1902, because obviously 1901 he was away in South Africa. So he qualified as a Queen shot, and then there are five other badges as well, shooting, various shooting badges, or medallions, should I say, that he'd uh, earned over the years. One of them is quite magnificent. The one at the top of the frame says Brisbane Tramway. So he was in the Brisbane Tramway Rifle Club. They're all engraved at the back with his name and the actual date of the award. So, as I said, Edney was 19, but luckily he was a fairly tall uh, young fellow. Uh, he could shoot very well. said he was 21 years old on his attestation papers, and I guess the uh, recruiting officer thought, well, he has a young man who can shoot. He's a queen shot. Uh, why not uh, defend uh, the queen and country? So off he went with the uh, 6th Queensland Mounted Infantry. They left Brisbane in March 1901 and sailed for Cape Town. Uh, I don't know his exact movements throughout the war or during the war, but what we do know is at some stage the family told me that he'd actually personally captured this rifle from Berger J.P. Marais. So as I mentioned before, the two that I've managed to find were both sent to POW camps in 1901 and Edney was most certainly in South Africa in 1901. So being a keen rifleman, obviously the state-of-the-art M95 Vore Mauser it was a terrific uh, weapon to have. Uh, he had a Lee Enfield Mark I, of course, Mark I star, and the Mauser was most certainly a better weapon uh, in the field. So obviously he was very keen to bring this home with him. 
Some time after capturing this rifle, uh, he was involved in an attack on a Boer position. And this is where, uh, when one buys something from the family and there's provenance, it makes such a difference. Uh, his grandson was able to tell me that um, during this charge at the Boer position, these guys are all mounted on horses. They're charging towards the Boer position. The Boers opened up with a pom-pom. It was a 37 millimeter Maxon Nordenfeldt pom-pom, which could be uh, devastating, of course, to both man and beast. Uh, his, Edney's horse was shot with this uh, pom-pom shell, brought it down immediately. Uh, Edney was thrown from the horse and during the whole episode, the horse actually landed on his legs. So the attack went forward. The guys carried the actual copy where the Boers were defending their position. And sometime later, they came back, his mates came back and managed to free Edney from underneath this dead horse. But as you can imagine, with the weight of a, of a big charger, uh, his legs were very badly crushed. That was the end of the war for Edney. He was sent back to a casualty clearing station and then to hospital. Uh, his legs were obviously splintered and bandaged up and uh, he was put on the books to be sent back to Australia. He obviously smooth talked one of the nurses uh, in, the, in the hospital because what he decided to do, he wanted to take this rifle back as his war trophy. So he took the barrel uh, and action out of the stock and got the nurses to uh, wrap it uh, onto the side of his leg with bandages. So he had this, this leg with uh, plaster paris and bandages and I guess it would be very difficult to, uh, to actually pick the barrel that was there as well. He then put the stock into his kit bag with some of his other stuff and uh, was sent home on the ship Lura in uh, 1902. Evidently, he was worried about uh, being stopped by customs when he actually got back to Australia. And that wasn't the case because uh, many, many uh, hundreds of probably thousands of guys brought these war trophies back from South Africa during the Boer War. And in actual fact, as I mentioned in my first book, uh, the word got around that they were selling Boer Mausers in Melbourne and Sydney for five pounds each. In those days, five pounds was a lot of money, so a lot of guys brought these back. All right, luckily in the, uh, uh, a few newspaper reports have survived. Uh, Edney came from a small town called Goodna, which is really only a village north of Brisbane, near to Ipswich. Um, there's a thing in the newspaper where uh, the correspondent came around and they had a big family reunion for Edney, a returning hero. There were two young lads that had been sent home, both wounded from South Africa. And as I said, they got a mention in the, uh, in the newspaper, the local paper. It took him some time to get over his injuries, but by the time he did, the war was over. But he took up his, uh, his old passion of rifle shooting. And the medallions that you can see in the frame there are dated from 1901 through to 1919. So even up to the end of World War I, he was busy shooting. Uh, during my research, I came across a gentleman called Miles Farmer. And Miles Farmer was a retired commanding officer of the 2nd 14th QMI, Queensland Mounted Infantry. Uh, this was the, uh, the, the local regiment, which had been, um, or was actually 6th QMI, which had been renamed after the Boer War. Um, when I was chatting to Miles, he said, you know, uh, we were given the freedom of the city as a regiment in uh, 1974. And he said, I well remember that there were six surviving Boer War veterans in Brisbane or in the Brisbane area. And we tracked them down and we actually invited them to come along to the Freedom of the City uh, uh, parade. <clears throat> so uh, what actually happened is uh, he dug, ar dug around uh, Miles Farmer and found these photographs of uh, this occasion of the Freedom of the City. And there's a fantastic photograph of him saluting at Anzac Square and six Boer War veterans lined up behind him. Edney Richardson is the, uh, the old gentleman, second from the left, wearing his, uh, his Queen South Africa medal very proudly. And he was at the ripe old age of 92. Uh, Greg, the grandson, told me that uh, he well remembers as an older man, Edney had a lot of problems with circulation and you know bad wounds to his leg and scars where his legs had been uh, very badly injured due to the, the fall from the horse. But to his dying day, he'd been a keen rifle shot. He loved his rifle, he used to oil it. But uh, as Greg said, uh, he had two daughters and uh, his wife didn't want a rifle in the house. So he very kindly sold it to me. But luckily for me, along came all this information about the rifle, about Edney Richardson, the photographs and the story.